Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we shall study some other technical terms in the Paninian Grammar. We have already studied some technical terms starting with Vakya, Pada, Dhatu, Pratipadika, Krit, Tadhita, etc. In the beginning, we also studied the technical term it as well as Savarana. Now in this lecture, we shall study some other important technical terms in the Paninian grammar and we shall see how they get applied. We do not claim to have covered all the technical terms used by Panini in his grammar. But the ones that we have studied, we hope will give you a good enough overall picture of the overall system of Panini's grammar. So these are some other technical terms that we shall study in the course of this lecture. Samhita, Avasana, Sarvadhatuka, Ardhadhatuka, Parasmaipada, Atmane Pada, Nishtha on one hand and Nadi, Ghi, Ti, Upadha, Sarva Nama and Avyaya on the other hand. We continue to have the derivation of the sentence in the background. So meaning data set is this, we have already studied this we form the constituents of the meaning and then we link these constituents with the verbal constituents in this particular fashion and then we start the derivation of the Sanskrit sentence in this particular format in which the verbal action takes the prominence to which is added the suffix thing and then sup is added to fill in the remaining slots and then the prakritis are added to fill in the slots of the prakritis in the other words and then when all the prakritis and pratyayas are stated in the sentence, the derivation of the entire sentence begins. And then we arrive at these derived stages and finally Gachati Ramogramam is the sentence that is derived. On the backdrop of this entire derivation process, let us now study the technical terms that were mentioned in the outline of this lecture. We derive this particular data set from the artha, we derive these shabdas and then they are expressed in the audible speech. Let us see what is Samhita. Samhita is extremely important because this term helps Panini also give sutras to account for the Vedic forms in his grammar. Now Gachati Ramo Gramam with some minimum space in between. This is called Samhita and the definition of Samhita is given in Panini's grammar by the Sutra 14109 which reads Paraha Sannikarshaha Samhita. Paraha Sannikarshaha. Sannikarsha is proximity, para is extreme proximity. The extreme proximity of sounds is termed as Samhita. What is the measurement of this extreme proximity? What is extreme proximity? It is defined as not having a gap more than the one required for distinct audible perception of two sounds. When two sounds 
do not have a gap more than the one required for distinct audible perception of sounds, two sounds, then such a situation is called Samhita. So what it assumes is that in order to have a distinct audible perception of two sounds, some biological gap is necessary. So to have only that much gap is what is extreme proximity. If you have more than that as a gap, then that is not called Samhita. That could be called as Apahita or Vyavahita as in the case of these words Gachati and then you take a pause, more gap than what is required for the distinct audible perception of the sounds. Then you utter Ramaha and then there is still some more gap. Then you utter Gramam. And when you do this, the form, the shape of the sounds also changes. For example, here you have Ramo, but here we will have Ramaha. The euphonic combination has its effects which are missing over here. When this word Ramaha goes into this form, where is it is Samhita, that means you are uttering the word Gramam with close proximity without having additional gaps, then this shape Ramaha turns into Ramo. That is the effect of Samhita. So Samhitayam is a word used in Ashtadhyayi in three places as an adhikar, stating thereby the environment in which the rules apply. These are the three sections from 6172 up to 157, 63114 up to 139 and 82108 up to 8468. What this means is that the rules stated in these three sections, they have Samhita as an environment. So the operations stated in these sutras, they get operated in the environment of Samhita. If the speaker does not want to do Samhita, then these rules will not apply. So this Ramaha will not change to Ramo if the speaker does not want to do Samhita. If the speaker wants to speak at leisure, having more gap than what is needed actually biologically, then he need not have to do these operations. Gachati, Ramaha and Gramam uttered separately are not Samhita. This is an extremely important technical term defined by Panini, which can also have repercussions in the study of speech forms using modern technology. There is one more term in this context that is also defined by Panini, which is very, very crucial, namely Avasana. And it is defined as Viramaha Avasanam, Viramo Avasanam 14110. The absence of any sound is termed as avasana, absence. So even the absence is given some technical stature and nomenclature. So this absence indicates the end of a unit, say for example, a sentence or even a word. The application of this term is done by Panini in the Sutra Vavasane 8456, which says that immediately before an avasana, substitute optionally jhal by char. So when there is an absence of any sound coming after, immediately after, then a jhal is substituted optionally by a char. So for example, you have ramad and after that if there is no sound coming, that means there is avasana, there is absence of any sound over here, then this the is optionally substituted by the. That means you get two forms, Ramat and Ramad. So this is how the term Avasana is cleverly used as an environment by Panini. After this, let us go to the other important terms, Sarvadhatuka and Ardhadhatuka, which are required for the derivation of the Pada forms notably 
the verbal forms. Let us see what is Sarvadhatuka. So the definition of Sarvadhatuka is given in 34113 and the sutra reads Tingshit Sarvadhatukam. What it means is Ting suffixes and any suffix added to a verbal root with the marker sh is termed Sarvadhatuka. I repeat Ting suffixes and any suffix added to a verbal root apart from the thing of course with the marker sh is term sarvadhatuka. For example, if you have gamma plus t here gamma plus t, t is a sarvadhatuka suffix as it is part of thing. If you want to derive the verbal form gachati, this is the first stage we have gamma plus t, t is part of thing and therefore it is a sarvadhatuka. And on the basis of t being a sarvadhatuka then applies 3168 and the suffix shap gets added and then we get gamma plus shap plus t. Now we know that in shap, pa is a marker and sh is a marker. Pa is a marker as defined by halantyam mantri 3 and sh is a marker as defined by lashakva tadhite which is 1, 3, 8. And so tasya lopaha, both these markers are deleted. So we get gamma plus a plus t. Now this shap is shit. It is also added after a verbal root. Therefore it is a sarvadhatuka. So this a is a sarvadhatuka suffix because it is added to a verbal root and also has sh as a marker. Now on account of the fact that this is a sarvadhatuka suffix and also a shit suffix, 7377 applies and then gamma gets replaced by gacha and so we get by doing some more operations, we get gacha plus a plus t and gacha t. So here we have two suffixes, one is a thing, one is a shit other than thing added after a verbal root. So both of them they get the term sarvadhatuka. Both these suffixes are sarvadhatuka suffixes. Then comes the technical term ardhadhatuka. Stated in the sutra ardhadhatukam shesha 34114. Shesha is a an important device used by Panini for defining certain technical terms. So ardhadhatukam sheshaha, remaining suffixes that are added to a verbal root are termed ardhadhatuka. Remaining means the suffixes which are obviously not thing and also not with the marker sh, they are all called ardhadhatuka. And then there are some other sutras which also term some things indicating some particular tense as ardhadhatuka as an exception. So here are some suffixes which are non-things primarily which are termed ardhadhatuka. So if you have patha as the verbal root to which is added the suffix ta or tavya or tum or tva in various senses. Since these four suffixes are added to a verbal root and are not part of thing or shit either, these are termed ardhadhatuka suffixes. And then 7235 applies and we get patha plus eta, etavya, etum and etva and then we get the forms patita, patitavya, patitum and patitva. So this is how the forms are derived by the technique term ardhadhatuka being used by Panini. So the function of the technical term ardhadhatuka is stated on this slide namely addition of the augment e to the suffix. This is primarily an important function of the ardhadhatuka suffix. Similarly, the technical term parasmai pada is also equally important. This is again in the environment of the suffixes which are added to a verbal root. 
The term Parasmai Pada is defined by Panini in the Sutra Lav Parasmai Padam 1499. What this means is all substitutes in place of the suffix L are termed Parasmai Pada. So thing is stated as a substitute of L by 3478. L is an abstract suffix that is stated by Panini which comes in the initial stages of the derivation of the verbal form. Now the thing suffixes which are stated as a substitute of L stated by 3478 they are termed as Parasmai Pada. Similarly the suffixes Shatru and Shanach are stated as substitutes of L by 32124 they are also termed as Parasmai Pada generally by this sutra and why I am saying by this sutra will be clear in a while. Now the thing to be noted as far as Parasmai Pada suffixes are concerned is that the meaning of Parasmai Pada suffix is always Karta as stated in 1378 Sheshat Kartari Parasmai Padam. So generally when a suffix term Parasmai Pada is used in the sentence the voice is always active or you can say that it is always Kartru Vachya. The suffix the thing suffix after the verbal root denotes Karta. This is an active voice or Kartru Vachya. This is how Parasmai Pada is used. The related technical term is Atmane Pada and this is defined as Tangana Vatmane Padam 14100. What this means is that amongst the things which are generally termed as Parasmai Pada, Tang and Ana are termed Atmane Pada. So Tang and Ana are given one specific term Atmane Pada which cancels the general term Parasmai Pada. So now Tang and Ana are called Atmane Pada. Apart from Karta, the meaning of Atmane Pada is Karma and Bhava as stated by 1, 3, 13 and 14. In addition to these two meanings, we can also say that for verbal roots which take both set of sets of suffixes, Atmane Pada as well as Parasmai Pada, Atmane Pada suffixes denote in addition that the result of the action locates in the karta of the action. This is stated by 1372. I repeat for verbal roots which take both sets of suffixes namely Atmane Pada and Parasmi Pada, the Atmane Pada denotes in addition to karta and karma it denotes that the result of the action performed and indicated by the verbal root locates in the karta of that action and this is stated by 1372. These are the functions of Atmane Pada. So let us take a look at Parasmai Pada and Atmane Pada in this table. These are the 18 suffixes which we have already studied right from the technical term it saudhnya onwards. But we did not introduce the terms Parasmai Pada and Atmane Pada explicitly which we are doing now. <coughs> so these are the thing suffixes which make a Pada, these are added to a verbal root and the resultant output is a Pada. Now these 18 suffixes they are divided into two groups. The green ones they are finally called Parasmai Pada and the purple ones they are to be termed Atmane Pada. The meaning of the Parasmai Pada is invariably Karta. Amongst the Karakas it denotes Karta and invariably the meaning of these purple ones the Atmane Pada are Karta as well as Karma as well as Bhava. <coughs> but these nine suffixes they always denote Karta. So whenever these suffixes are used, nine suffixes, you can be sure 
that this is a kartruvacha or an active voice construction. But when the Atmanipada is used, you cannot be so sure because it could be either kartruvacha or karma vacha or bhava vacha. So, you have to look at the suffix that comes in between the verbal root and these suffixes that will give you an indication about the voice. So, this is the difference between the Parasmaipada and the Atmanipada. Remember what we said is these 9 suffixes are termed Parasmaipada. So, when the term Parasmaipada is used this term denotes these 9 suffixes and Atmanipada is a term that denotes these other 9 suffixes. These 9 suffixes are called Atmanipada primarily apart from Shanach etc. So, these forms Nayati, Nayataha, Nayanti, Nayasi, Nayataha, Nayatha and Nayami, Nayavaha, Nayamaha these are to be called as Parasmaipada and Nayate, Nayate, Nayante, Nayase, Nayate, Nayadve, Naye, Nayavahe, Nayamahe these are to be called as Atmanipada forms of the verbal root. And we said that in this case when Atmanipada is used it denotes an additional meaning namely the result of the action locates in the karta of the action Y1372. Let us now study one more technical term Nishtha. This is defined by Panini in 1126, Khtaktavatu Nishtha. What this says is that the suffixes Khta and Khtavat are termed Nishtha. Khta and Khtavat are termed Nishtha. And then we have the Sutra 32102, the Sutra is Nishtha. This Sutra prescribes addition of Nishtha suffixes after any verbal root in the sense of past tense as well as karta, khtavat and karma and bhava, khta. So, for example, if you take the verbal root patha and add the suffix ta or khtavat to it, you add the augment e before both the suffixes ta and tavat. So, you have e ta and e tavat as before because these two will be also called ardhatuka because they are added after a verbal root and they are neither thing nor shit. And so here you will get the form patita and patitavat. Patita means something that was read. So, ta indicates karma or the action of reading where ta indicates bhava. In patitavat the meaning is someone who did read. That means tavat indicates karta as the meaning. This is also an important technical term associated with the suffixes that are added after a verbal root. Let us now study some technical terms which come in the context of the derivation of the Subanta forms. The first term is Nadi, a very very crucial peculiar kind of term defined by Panini in 143, you striakhyau Nadi. What this means is that words expressing feminine gender and ending in long e and long u, they are termed nadi. For example, gauri, nadi, chamu, vadhu, etc. These are all called nadi technically. So, the application of the term nadi is found in the generation of peculiar subanta forms 41, 51, 61, and 63 and 7, 1, etc. Incidentally also by 1, 4, 6, the sutra Gniti Rasvascha, the term Nadi is also applied to the words expressing feminine gender and ending in short E and U optionally when before the Nit suffixes. What this sutra means is words expressing feminine gender and ending in short e and u are optionally termed nadi immediately before the nit suffixes. We shall see the examples of this as well. So, to sum up 
the technical term nadi we can say that ganga and yamuna are not nadi in the paniyan grammar because they do not end in long e or long u sthali however which means a land which ends in long e is term nadi so there is a famous saying which sums up this situation saying that paniner na nadi ganga yamuna na nadi sthali neither ganga nor yamuna is nadi according to panini sthali is however a nadi according to panini this is the strange behavior of the term so now if these are the subs 21 subs these are the 21 forms of the word gauri gauri gauriyau gauriyah gaurim gauriyau gaurihi gauriya gauri bhyam gauri bhi etc the ones marked in blue they show the forms in the derivation of which the term nadi is used by panini similarly if we look at the subanta forms of mati here you have the pratipadika mati ending in short e so also feminine so there is optional nadi saudnya in nit suffixes which is these four so you have optional forms matye the blue ones they indicate the nadi saudnya the technical term nadi applied and the purple ones indicate another technical term ghi which we shall study next but the point is that these are the forms that are derived because this is called nadi optionally so in order to account for such variations the terms nadi as well as ghi are necessary for panini so what is ghi ghi is defined by 147 as shesho ghi asakhi once again the technique of shesha comes in handy remaining words excluding of course sakhi are termed as ghi now what is remaining what are the remaining words one words expressing masculine and neuter gender they are all remaining two words expressing feminine gender and ending in short e and u immediately before nit suffixes they are also remaining so they will be also called nadi optionally of course and some other exceptions stated in 144 and 145 they are to be termed as ghi wherever the sutra says so examples of the term ghi are hari kavi and mati hari and kavi these are masculine gender words ending in short e and then there could be bhanu ending in short u that could be the example of ghi as well also mati and dhenu these are the words ending in short e and u indicating feminine gender and they will also be called term nadi optionally when nit suffixes follow and so these are the forms in which the purple forms shown they help i mean they are the ones the derivation of which is done by panini using the term ghi these are the forms of the word hari in masculine and then of course we have seen the derivation of the form of forms of mati which is in feminine so if we go back to those forms of mati we can see that here are the purple forms which are derived using the term ghi and here are the blue forms which are derived using the technical term nadi these variations gauri on the one hand hari on the other hand and mati in between this is done in an easier manner when panini uses these technical terms nadi ghi and optional nadi and optional ghi now let us come to some other types of definitions some other technical terms these are formal elements notably t is the first technical term or saudnya that we shall study now this is defined by panini in 
the sutra is achontyadi t what this means is the verbal element beginning with the final vowel of a bigger verbal element is termed t here are examples for you so if we have an element in which there occurs a string which has a v v stands for a vowel then consonant then consonant then a vowel then a consonant and that's it that's the end of the unit then you look for the last vowel amongst all the vowel which is this v and start with it come up to the end of the word that string namely v c here is termed t so the verbal element beginning with the final vowel v c is here termed t in the second case where you have v c c b where v comes at the end you so pick the final vowel that is this v and this is the end so by definition this v will be termed as t so here are some examples marut which consists of two vowels a and u the final vowel is u so beginning with this u the verbal element ut will be termed as t sarva has got the final vowel a that will be termed as t kumuda has this final vowel a this will be termed the t in atam you have am there are two vowels a and a the final vowel is a beginning with that you have an element am this will be marked as will be termed as t and then the rules will apply 3479 which will substitute this am by a and you will get the form ate same thing same thing is true about atham where am is t now the functions of t is r substitution of t done by let's say deletion by 64143 substitution of t by another verbal element done by 3479 as in the case of atham and atham or the augment addition done by 5371 these are some functions for assigned to the technical term t what we can say is that this is a formal element also a dynamic element and universal application of the definition is ensured however not all sutras will take advantage of this universality of the application of this technical term t clearly this is an artificial technical term created by panini so if we look at this chart of thing suffixes we notice that there are these suffixes which have atam and atham and mahi etc so in atam we have this am as t am as t once again in dham there is am acting as t and in vahi and mahi there is this e and e which acts as t and so here are the forms which have this a substitution taking place almost all the forms where t is replaced by a the next technical term which is also formal is upadha defined by panini in 1165 the sutra is alontyat purva upadha what this means is the earlier sound before the final one that means the penultimate sound is termed upadha so if we have this structure where we have a vowel followed by a consonant followed by a vowel followed by a consonant followed by a vowel then this penultimate vowel penultimate sound c a consonant is termed as upadha and in another structure where we have vowel followed by consonant followed by vowel followed by consonant at the end this vowel which comes in the penultimate position will be termed upadha so if you have the word pachika this word has k consonant in the position of upadha and if we take the verbal root patha the vowel a is termed as upadha because it is occurring in the penultimate position now why leveraging this fact panini is prescribing let's say 6337 which is na kopadhaya certain operation is negated to the word which has k as its upadha and 
this patha has a in its upadha. So, 72116 states that this a becomes a. So, this is how the technical term upadha is used by Panini to state certain grammatical operations. Once again, we can say that this technical term is indicating a formal element of the grammar, a dynamic element and the universal application of the definition provided by Panini. Once again, we note that not all sutras take leverage of this particular universal application of this definition. After having looked at these formal definitions, let us now try to study some other definitions which take into consideration some categories of words. One of the prominent ones is Sarvanama. This is defined as Sarvadini Sarvanamani 1127. This is an enumerative definition. What this means is that a list of words beginning with Sarva is termed Sarvanama and there are 35 words. The two amongst them are Tat and Tvam mentioned in the sentence, very famous sentence from Upanishads, Tat Tvamasi Amahavakya. So, there are 35 words, Sarva, Vishva, Ubha, Ubhaya, Datara, Datama, Anya, Anyatara, Itara, Tvatva, Nema, Samasima, Urva, Paravara, Dakshino, Tara, Paradharani, Vyavasthayam, Asaudnyayam, Swamadnyati, Dhanakhyayam, Antaram, Bahir, Yogo, Pasam, Vyana, Yoho, Tyad, Tad, Yad, Eta, Dida, Madas, Ekadvi, Jishma, Dasmad, Bhavatu, Kim. These are the 35 words which are termed Sarvanam. The function of this technical term is obviously replacement of a noun and then some specific Subanta forms. These are the Subanta forms shown in blue color which are the features of the Sarvanama Saudhnya technical term. There are five forms, one, three, Sarve, different than Rama, Ramaha, here it is Sarve, then Ramaya and now here we have Sarvasmai, Ramat and we have Sarvasmat, Ramanam and we have Sarvesham, Rame, we have Sarvasmin. These are the five forms which are different, which are derived by the technical term Sarvanama. There are some more functions, but we will go into the details of them when we do the advanced course. Let us now study the technical term Avyaya, another very important technical term defining a particular category of words and the definition is once again an enumerative definition. This is defined by the sutra Swaradi Nipatam Avyayam 1137. If we look at the Sarvanama Saudhnya, there are bunch of sutras 1127 onwards up to 1136 which defines Sarvanama, a big section. Similarly, the technical term Avyaya is also defined by a few sutras. The first one amongst them is this 37, 1137 up to 1141 these sutras define what is an avyaya. So, the sutra is Swaradi Nipatam Avyayam and the meaning of this sutra is the list beginning with the words Swar and Nipata, they are termed avyaya. The list beginning with the words Swar consists of several words like Antar, Pratar, Sayam, etc. And Nipata is another technical term defined by 1456 which states that all the words stated in between 56 and 98, they are termed as Nipata. An example of this would be Upasargas like Pra, Para, Apasam, Anu, Ava, Nist, Nir, Dus, Dur, etc. All of them, they are termed as Nipatas. Avyaya is a category of words with the absence of final suffixes. That is why this becomes very, very important. In Paninian grammar, the suffixes are added after these Avyayas and then they are deleted thereby giving the status of Pada to the Avyayas and thereby making them eligible to be used in a sentence. This is the technical term Avyaya. There are some other technical terms in Paninian grammar. Some of them we already studied like it 132 to 8, Savarna 119 and 10, Dhatu 131 and 3132, Pratipadika 1245 and 46, Krit 3193, Taddita 4176. We also studied the technical terms namely Samasa and then there are some other technical terms like 
pradhiradai where the technical term vriddhi is assigned to the sounds a and i aden guna 112 where the technical term guna is assigned to the sounds a and ing a o similarly we have mukhanasika vachana anunasika the term anunasika defined in this sutra as a sound which is produced using mukha and nasika the oral cavity as well as the nasal cavity uchairudattah the vowel that is pronounced with a high tone high pitch is udatta nichair anudattah low pitch is anudatta and samaharah svaritah a combination of both these is called svarita these are some other technical terms also defined by panini and also defined to describe the linguistic data available to him to summarize various types of technical terms are used by panini in this grammar to systematically arrange the data set so that generation of the forms is smoother and rule based these technical terms also give us give us feature descriptions as well as negation like for example the term savarna it describes the features which contribute to the definition of savarna and also some other features which contribute to the negation of the term savarna applying to certain elements there is formal aspect of words which is given significance in some technical terms whereas in some technical terms enumerative definitions are used to describe certain broad categories phonetic descriptions are used to define properties of sounds artificial technical terms are used to help explain variations in the word forms these technical terms feed into the rules which prescribe the operations now in the next lecture we shall study some other types of sutras notably the paribhasha sutras thank you for your attention